Okay, let's start. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Yasushi, and uh, I'm an organizer of the TDSW. And then we are a creative community based in Tokyo, Japan. And uh, we sometimes organize like, uh, meetup and audiovisual events, and also uh, online workshop like this. And then, uh, so if you are interested, and uh, we have uh, lots of uh, workshop archives on our YouTube channel. So uh, please search TDSW on YouTube. And today uh, we're gonna have uh, Stan Stanislav Brazov. Uh, we're gonna I'm gonna call him Stan, and uh, he's a pretty experienced audiovisual artist and uh, producer and composer and also educator based in Berlin. Uh, today he's gonna uh, introduce us about uh, Bitwig, the music DAO. So I'm pretty interested in it. So excited. And then that today we're gonna have a workshop from the almost three hours. Uh, basically, we we just do a workshop in one hour and a pre probably break in the ten minutes. Uh, it depends on how progress uh, by Stan. But uh, yeah, we're gonna do it like this. And then the hit uh, Stan told us uh, he gonna share the sample files after this lesson. And uh, yeah, please uh, look look forward to sample files after that. Uh, okay, and then the, okay, Stan, uh, you can you can start your sharing your screen, and then you can start your workshop. Cool. One second, I will press share. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for my Tokyo friends <laughs> for inviting me, and it's very very I'm very happy about that. And uh, hello from the rainy Berlin. So today I want to show uh, a bit of my two favorites program I use in almost everyday life. It's uh, Touch Designer and Bitwig. And first I want to make a small introduction about myself for some people who might did know me or what I do in sense of music and visuals. And uh, yeah, I'm, I started to produce music since 18 years. I was used a long time the Ableton Live until last year I met uh, finally Bitwig, which corresponds to my needs much more. And uh, I was also started to make visuals first with Resolume, which was very limited, so in very short time after that i was started to use touch designer and uh, first i want to show maybe some of my early and later projects so i think one of the most uh, first performances i can speak about it was a performance 2015 which i've done in uh, wroclaw it was a very nice event we don't uh, we also the a touch designer workshop it was based on film studio where one of my favorite uh, director was working Zbigny Frepchinski and uh, then it was a very nice perfor uh, performance night it was also biosphere performing there some local Polish artists and it was a crazy setup with four screens like three scre three uh, screens in a row and one transparent screen in the front and uh, in this performance, fairly to say, I didn't have any uh, scenario or particular topic I want to tell about. It was just nice visuals I created to make, make with touch designer and synchronize with music. So I will show some parts.
so I can share the full link later if you want to see it. It was a first uh, big experiment where I tried to synchronize uh, music and visuals so deep than possible. And uh, also in the same moment I was collaborating with Dasha Rush for several performances. So I will also make a short playback from the first performance we created which called Antarctic Tact. And uh, I spent several years working on it and also researched a lot of, uh, made a lot of progress in Touch Designer during this project. And uh, for this project, particularly, I was also researching how to synchronize visuals in case you don't have the media data. So using audio analysis and to make a flexible control for capturing different uh, frequency ranges. was presented first time on uh, Berlin Atonal 2014 and last time we were performing it in uh, Barcelona for Mira festival in full dome resolution. Okay, then I show a bit of my more modern projects. So I spent a lot of uh, years for different types of research. I was always interested to get so much different experience than possible. So I was experimenting with dance performances and with generating music by the dancer movements. So for that reason, I was uh, during COVID, we created a performance with Berlin Ballet. Uh, so I show a bit of this project. In uh, this performance, we were using uh, four MIDI sensors. Which were mounted on the hands and legs of the dancers. And f almost full soundtrack is generated by the movement. Also, uh, I gathered some experience how to make uh, the good mix between generative and uh, narrative. And in this performance I uh, made some improvement in sense. Uh, we made the scen scenario of the performance using the arrangement in Ableton. It was done yeah, like long time ago before I started using Bitwig but it was enough space for the generative parts so it, it's kind of mix between generative and programmed performance
so and uh, I will show a bit more of my own works uh, I think I will show some small reel and uh, do some explanation behind That's one of my last performances I made. It's um, combining interactive part. And uh, the idea was to make the uh, post-apocalyptic uh, alarm clock, <laughs> let's say, to tell the people we, have in, we, have, we live in a dangerous world where the, everything is controlled. So I put the camera and used Touch Designer face recognition to integrate the faces from people on dance floor to the visuals captured from the Chinese uh, face recognition system and military drones. So in this performance, uh, I, pre I was performing several times. Last time it was in uh, Münster. Uh, live performers meeting this year they improved this performance a lot i used a media pipe algorithm to process more faces than one this is a small capturing from our performance with our industrial opera project where it was also some interactive visuals involved That is a past part of my performance uh, 2018, performing in Gamma Festival, where I came to idea that just generative videos are not enough, and I want more to you to work with video footage processed by generative eff effects to bring more narrative part in my projects. That is uh, our performance with uh, Valentin Zin, who is a very known Buto performer. And we created a performance completely based on the motion capturing of his movement, transforming that using touch designer into analog music, also controlling li lasers and lights. This is a, one of the last performances uh, I created in panoramic space. It's also kind of very abstract, but here was the most important target to or task to create uh, the, something which is working in real time on super high resolution of 17,000 pixels by 1,000 pixels for panoramic projection.
and that's one of my last installation where I spent a, lo a lot of effort for in several interesting parts. First one was to create very detailed uh, sound and very detailed sound uh, video synchronization uh, and also to work with quadraphonic sound and to connect the visual events to the quadraphonic space. Sound here was also created by the analog scenes and uh, arranged in Ableton. I was using Ableton long years until I finally met Bitwig because uh, that's I, I call finally because uh, Ableton was very limited in sense of modulations and in sense of flexibility to make mix between uh, arrangement and generative audio and uh, Bitwig feels that gap so it has a lot of tools which can add a bit of um, um, a lot of life in your sound using very very user-friendly flexible approaches even more flexible uh, even more user-friendly than touch design so I think I will stop now with uh, showcasing my work. Maybe that is the last performance I will show. It was a very nice uh, occasion to play in uh, 14th century monastery in Prague for the lunch meat festival. And I also filmed every, every visual myself and synchronized it to the sound with uh, the workflow I found very flexible and rush to solve that kind of task. Okay, thank you for spending time looking to my works and now I want to finally start with uh, speaking about the topics of our lesson so what I want to bring you today is uh, mostly to speak about Bitwig why it's so cool and why I replaced in my uh, personal workflow the Ableton completely with Bitwig and uh, how we can use Bitwig with Touch Designer. So I think uh, I don't speak so much about Touch Designer today, but I want to show some practical example of uh, synchronizing Bitwig and Touch Designer on the end of the lesson. And I want to also to speak about the data structure of uh, Bitwig and how we can find a parallel between this data structure and how the TD Bitwig plugin is constructed to understand uh, how to use it together. So let's maybe start from the new project. And so I introduce Bitwig right now. Bitwig is a digital audio workstation as soon as I know created with a couple of programmers working before in Ableton. So it has some similarity to Ableton, but logically it's different. And one thing is very cool and uh, why Ableton became so popular in some time, some years ago, because uh, before Ableton there are no digital audio workstation oriented for fill the gap between the studio production and live performance. And for myself, for example, it was always very, very important to have uh, my own workflow based on the system, which have no difference between uh, re recording tracks 
and playing live. And for that reason, I chose uh, Ableton because it was only program working on this approach. Uh, currently, I discovered that Bitwig also have, have quite similar approach. It have very similar from the first point of view interface. So we have these two modes where we can work with mixer and where we can switch to the arrangement mode. And that way we almost have no difference between producing tracks or playing live. What was problematic in Ableton for me all the time, it had no modulations. It had no possibility to flexibly control the parameters of the instruments. And uh, for me as the long time touch designer user and for me as a long time uh, modular synthesizer user and I started also to make music with modulars only because of possibility to modulate, to make more complex sound structures, I found the possibilities of Ableton not usable. So basically it was only possible to solve this problem by using Max, Max for Live devices. Uh, but Max for, uh, so if you were applying too much of Max for Live devices, any computer's CPU was dead. So, uh, I, I, I see there are some questions in the chat. I think I will speak first and then uh, in some moment I will answer the questions. So, in order to take the workshop more structured. Okay, so um, what I found that uh, Bitwig solves this problem completely and we can modulate any possible parameter much, much more simpler, uh, even than in touch design. So let's speak a bit about user interface of Bitwig. We have here in mixer mode uh, the tracks. Every track can be like uh, in any of digital audio workstations, either MIDI or audio. Bitwig has also the additional possibility to have mixed tracks. Then inside of track we have clip slots where we can create the patterns or clips and dependent on the type of a track we can create either midi track midi clips where we have the piano roll and we can draw notes and we have the audio track where we can load samples then if we create a midi clip logically we need to have some instruments to uh, make uh, possible to generate a sound. So uh, if we imagine, if we, we can even draw some diagram that we have a clip clip is generating MIDI data so we output this data to the next node which is actually the track and inside of this track we can have a bunch of other operators so we can process midi data somehow that's kind of operators will be called like node fix Then we can output data from the note fix to the instrument. And resulting data will turn into audio. Because instruments are generating sound. And then we can process the resulting sound by some audio effects. So if we will draw in node based uh, representation and uh, 
So that will be like very basic representation of the workflow, what happening with data inside of one track. Uh, in case we working with audio, we don't have all the black part. We starting directly with the green part in my diagram. So let's take a look how it's realized in Bitwig with particular devices. So I, I made some, some clip. I can play back some, opera, uh, some, uh, some notes. And now the MIDI data from the clip incoming to the track. So you can see this yellow square lightning, which showing that uh, we have some MIDI effects, uh, MIDI, uh, uh, MIDI triggers, MIDI data coming. Now we can click on this plus and add Uh, and add some instrument. Let's take a polysynth or polymer. So now you can see that something is played back. Uh, what is very cool that uh, you can construct the chains of devices and very flexible way. So that's mean you can just build the devices one after one, like in uh, Ableton or like you would make in basic touch designer node uh, network, or you can making nested devices so you can build in the operators inside of device so i will show the both way so for example after the synthesizer i will bring some effect for example delay one So now the data, the sound generated by the synthesizer is processed by the delay effect. Uh, there is also the second way. I can open this fix button and you can see that here there is a blue plus. I can move my delay one effect inside of the polymer synthesizer. Now it became a part of the nested network. And now I can close this effect by clicking on the FX button. What is the difference? The difference is that if you save, a pre uh, it's more compact representation. And also if you will save the preset of your instrument, all nested devices will be also saved inside. So it's kind of uh, digital asset in the terms of touch designer. Also, if you use modulations, which is a topic for later, uh, we can control everything which is inside of the nested devices networks by the modulators of the device. Okay, uh, now we have some sound coming out and where the same sound is going into. By default, it's set it up that way that the all tracks bringing the sound to the master and master is mixing if we continue to speak about the data flow we have track inside of track we have uh, devices and we, we also have a project which brings all data together so we have three layers of control, project, track, and device. That is important to understand uh, if we're going to research how we can get or send the data from Touch Designer or into Touch Designer using TD Bitwig plugin. 
Okay, I will short answer some uh, very important question from the chat. What is about VVVV and what is the difference to uh, touch designer? Uh, however, VVVV is also node based uh, multi purpose toolkit like touch designer. So let's just open some images showing VVVV. Uh, okay, I landed to Node Institute website uh, offering the introduction to VVV course. But okay, what is important for me here that if you look to the interface of uh, 4V, you will discover that 4V is not really user friendly. And uh, if I go a bit back to the story how VVV is appeared, uh, there are a software called Pure Data which was designed as a sound creation tool for university research in middle of 80s. Same actually time like Goudini was created as a tool, node based tool for computer graphics. And this is very interesting because uh, we, uh, Pure Data was a father or a even grandfather on, of for VVVV and Goudini is a father of Touch Designer. So the touch designer was created as a branch from Goudini, which was moving to make the computer graphics in real time and also use the Goudini approach for node based workflow. Uh, and uh, pure data created a several other projects or people inspired by pure data were creating several other projects uh, very known. Uh, one of them is Max MSP and second of them is VVVV. What you need to think, both, both programs are very flexible, have a lot of possibilities. And uh, what is a problematic from my point of view to work with uh, VVVV or Max MSP? It's a learning curve on first point in order to create even very simple effect or very simple setup, you need to learn a lot of operators because uh, if in touch designer, you're creating uh, operators from menu. So let me run some touch designer project, empty one. And uh, here we have the operator create dialog which just show everything you have in your palette, every operator you can create. And in VVV, you first create the operator and then you need to assign the type of this operator from the super long menu. And for that, you need to know the name of operator. So in order to create uh, some setup, you need to know a bunch of operators. So I think you need to spend around half of year just to learning the basic names of operator in order to be able to create very, very basic stuff. Second thing, which is also visible even from that screenshot we have here in order to visualize some result of what, what you are doing, you need to create a special operator called renderer and only renderer can output the results to some window. And in touch designer, you have the preview of every operator. So you can see what is very every operator is doing. So that's also helps a lot by learning and by production. Because it's very visual. So you will see everything in the same moment. So you have the project overview. Second problem with uh, VVV it's open source. So it, it's above, uh, it's, a, it's a problem and it's a profit. Profit because you have a lot of open source uh, developers who, uh, who upload different solutions. So you have a huge library of tools, 
but no one is very sure about the stability of these tools. And uh, in Touch Designer, it's engine with more than 25 years of history behind. So it's very, very, it has a, a lot of stability. So if you've done the projects, you can be sure it will works almost forever. So that is a basic difference on very, very first level. So if you have a very programmer state of mind, uh, if you are ready to work on super abstract level, and if you are ready to spend a half of year to learning the names of operators in order to create a basic stuff, then VV can be your choice. If you go for very fast results and don't want to lose your motivation, then maybe Touch Designer is better for you. Also, I think uh, VV is not working on Mac, so it's maybe a choice for Mac users. Okay, let's turn back to Bitwig. We created the basic instrument, which can play some, some stuff. So let's take a closer look what is inside, how it's constructed, and what are other profits of using Bitwig here. So first, that instrument is built on modular way, so I can preview the inner structure of this synthesizer. And if you are modular user or touch designer user, it looks similar to you because you can see the full node based diagram, how the sound is created inside of this synthesizer. That is only the visualization. So you cannot add some nodes here, but in any time you can convert it to the polygrid device, which will be completely editable. And that is a node-based instrument, which you have in uh, Bitwig. And here, I would say from the start, you don't need to use MaxMSP at all, because you have built-in node-based instrument designer. And it's very, very user-friendly, it's very simple. So if you have a bit of logic and understanding how the node-based workflow looks like, you can easily do your own instruments and it ha have very simple uh, and fast learning curve. So I will make undo, to turn it back to polymer synthesizer. And let's take a look. So it's also mo uh, modular still e even if you don't uh, have the possibility to edit the modular uh, representation it has several slots where you can implement the different modules so first one is a oscillator by default it's union oscillator but you can choose from a bunch of other oscillators for example you can choose the wave table then it has some sub oscillator, it has some built in noise. And then you can choose between different filters, filter modules. For example, I can replace the uh, low pass by something XP, let's say. It has two built in envelope generators. And this uh, envelope generator, which is controlling uh, the volume of the sound, you can also choose between five different amplitude en envelopes. So, for example, you can choose the AD, ADSR, segments. Segments is also another topic to speak about. Uh, and that is a basic synthesizer we have here. But now let's speak a bit about the modulations. 
which was for me the most important uh, reason to choose Bitwig. In uh, Ableton Live, you can remember there is the filter, the, there is one instrument which has a modulation which is called after filter and there you can use LFO to modulate the cutoff frequency on easy way. That's all. Also compressor and filter have built-in sidechain which is only available there. Also I think also in the gate model. So all other instruments just don't have any kind of modulations and in order to apply some modulation you need to create max for life device and modulate it somehow with other max for life uh, utilities which can generate LFOs or something like that. How it's all realized in Bitwig. So in Touch Designer you know you can create uh, different chop operators to modulate something. So basically it's the most important part of workflow with Touch Designer. Uh, and I think most of uh, Touch Designer users know that uh, it's not so easy to construct complex modulations with chops because you need to make a lot of movements for that. So let's now look how we can modulate something in in Bitwig. I will start with opening this button. So in every device you can see this dot with arrow. And here you can see already there are something, some uh, objects inside of these two slots. This is by default built-in modulators. I will tell a bit later about them, but let's just start with empty plus button. If I click here, I will open the window, even with nice visualization showing the connection of this window to this plus button. And I will see the menu of 43 modulators. Uh, in sense of touch designer, these modulators are mostly kind of chop operators. And uh, you can create some animations, let's say, or some generative animations, which are by default not, not connected to anything. So, for example, let's start with easy LFO. And now I created an LFO. So, in order to make this LFO usable for uh, the music production, first it should be synced. And secondary, we need to apply the resulting uh, value somewhere. So let's start with the first task, how to sync this LFO to something. By default, it's already synced. You can see we have a first menu showing the choice. We can sync is with Gertz, we can sync with bars. So let's start with bar because yeah, it's maybe is most usable way to work. So in this case, I will sync to one bar and I can use the output of this LFO to modulate the, for example, the uh, cutoff frequency. For that, I click on this blue button and I click on parameter. So all parameters which are modulatable uh, draw now with blue color and I can change the range of modulation. And because this uh, LFO is bipolar, which is visible because of this plus minus button, the modulation happens around the value of the knob in the range I moved. And here in the left part of user interface, you can see that we have the value of the range. And also what is quite important, we have also the lookup table 
or how it's mapped it, by default is has a flat linear response but we can change it to the for example logarithmic or exponential response which gives a lot of flexibility how you can map one parameter to other parameter you can also enter some value some precise values here so let's change first back to ADSR do you hear the sound well? I think it's okay for me okay cool so just because now maybe it's important to hear what we are doing okay now I have a modulation on the filter let's say I want also to change the position of the slider of the knob uh, every second bar randomly that means I need also to add a second modulator and I can click on the plus and add a random modulator here and you can see that this modulator also has a green button that was blue and that is green green means that's modulator is polyphonic so if you have the polyphonic synthesizer you can make a polyphonic modulation but let's start with simple one so I told that I want to change the value every two bars for that I can click here three times and enter two that will be changing value every second bar and now I can also apply modulation for that I just click on this dot with arrow and all parameters which can be modulated also drawn by green and now I can apply the modulation to the same knob okay so now I have both modulators applied to the same parameter let's say I want also to have some additional ADSR generator And uh, for example, I want to control the wavetable index. You can uh, you can hear now how uh, changes the sound if I go through the through the wavetable. And now I want to add some ADSR. can see even visualization here and now I can use the output to modulate the index
okay so now you can hear how flexible changes the sound And for example, I want to add some more modulation for the sub oscillator. Which will be playback on... Uh, I want to build kind of sequencer. Four step sequencer which will change the value of sub oscillation for every bar. For that reason I can create the step and step is a sequencer I can set it to the bar to change it to the four bars then I can change the amount of steps to make it four step And now I can output the value to the sub oscillator volume. And now with that several tools, we quite easily created very complex sounding synthesizer. So now let's uh, take a closer look uh, what we're sending to the synthesizer. So we can speak a bit about the operators and about the nodes. So what is basically the node? Node is a command, MIDI command, which contain several channels of data. First it sent trigger or gate for the time range where we synthesize, uh, the synthesizer should play something. Then this operator, uh, this node also sends the pitch or tone, tonality of synthesizer. But it also has uh, several other values attached to the command. And here in user interface, if we click on the show node expressions button, we can see that every node has attached velocity, timber, gain, panorama and pressure. Uh, and uh, already on that level, we can see that uh, Bitwig has a lot of generative possibilities. So for, for example, we can dynamically change something in every node for example we can generate the velocity spread so let's select last two nodes and uh, here in, uh, we can change the velocity spread so we can add the house and after i've done that you can see there is a range around the node velocity and every time i will play the this node it will generate the random velocity inside of this range the same we can do basically for all the data attached to the nodes for example i can add the random timber and we can change to timber and see that it's generating all the time the different values okay how we can use these values in the sound if I turn back to the synthesizer, you can see we have expressions. This modulator already created after I just dropped the polymer synthesizer in the track. And 
it has direct output of every of these data parameters so i can take velocity i can take timber by default velocity is for example mapped to the volume uh, that's parameter that's knob called velocity sensitivity of 50 percent that's mean is by default affecting the uh, the volume so i can disable the velocity sensitivity and just use velocity for control of different aspects of the sound for example i can change the decay of adsr and i can take the timber output and control something else for example i can control the shape of the sub oscillator uh, then uh, what i've done i generated the random timber and random velocity and was mapping that to the i removed the velocity mapping affecting the volume of the synthesizer and made the mapping from velocity output of expression modulator to the decay on the adsr and i took the timber output and map it to the shape of the sub oscillator so that was uh, the idea what i wanted to show how we can generatively control the uh, output of the nodes then let me show something more some some more interesting approaches how we can generate the uh, generative music even without the polygrid device just using the generative possibilities inside of note expressions note like midi notes so i will mute this channel i will create a new uh, instrument track this time i will take the fast four synthesizer and i will just go here create a new clip and i will draw just two long notes one note here and one note a bit longer here also i will move make a copy of note a bit higher somewhere here what i want to make i want to uh, make to split these notes to more notes than one which i can do using this uh, repeat rate count parameter and you can see now that this node has four nodes inside then i will do the same on these two nodes also i will make uh, five nodes then you can see we have a very cool controller here which can offset the timing and here i will move it a bit in this direction And now we have one note repeating several times in uh, first part of the bar and we have also two notes repeating several times on the second part of the bar. I don't want to play these two notes uh, polyphonically, I just want to play uh, some bars this C2 note and some bars the F2 note. So for that reason, I can use the recurrence length and I can, for example, select the F2, which should play, be played only on the first bar 
and for C2 I will do the same and change it to the other three bars. So basically what I've done is corresponds to making the nine notes and uh, schedule them in four bars loop. But it's all contained in one bar loop with only three notes. So it's very, very flexible way to control. We can also control the velocity very easily. And now we have this sequence. Now I can also take the velocity and control the the frequency cutoff with that for example uh, I will also show a bit about this phase fear phase 4 synthesizer it's the uh, four uh, the synthesizer which has four oscillators and these oscillators can modulate each other by these four knobs contained in every of these oscillators. So we can change the different wave shapes. Then we can apply the modulation. For example, if I will turn this red knob, I will modulate this blue oscillator I can also apply the filter modulation I can change the ratio Also, very very flexible device which can create very complex sound. Okay, that's is a small introduction to the other instrument and to usage of the. Uh, repeat and recurrency in notes i will mute this guy also and what i want to show you now is how to work with the sound uh, we, i mean how to work with the uh, audio samples i can convert the for example the first the first uh, pattern we created into sound by clicking with right mouse button and converting it using the command bounce in place that will turn that sound into sound sample what is interesting we still have the synthesis synthesizer on the track and th what we see right now uh, we can described as a hybrid track that's mean we can have simultaneously uh, the sound samples and the midi patterns on the same track this is also very special in bitwig because uh, no other digital audio workstation can have this and uh, I will move that sample to the audio track and I will show a bit of specific topics regarding the working with sound samples. So what is very interesting that for example in Ableton audio sample is the atomic unit for the uh, working with sound in audio tracks. In Bitwig, we have much more low-level control 
and inside of audio sample we can have uh, on sets or we can have the sub samples for that we can just take the knife tool and split the track to several cuts they should not be even length and then we can use the same possibilities to generate random events on these on sets so we can for example change the pitch randomly for these parts so i can add some house into pitch and let's play back what we have here okay that's i would no, i would not say that sounds super melodic <laughs> but that was also just an example how we can randomize what is outputted from the sound samples uh, at least uh, you can not only change the pitch here but you also can have the random panorama and gain so you can for example almost uh, disable some of these parts by random sound you can also have the chance of playing for these parts so you can play back the same sample on very random generative way which will obviously work well for example with drum patterns okay i think i i will show uh, i will save this project for you later so we will upload just that you can follow okay if you have a questions please write to the chat and i want to switch now a bit to the topic of how to use the cd bitwig to integrate bitwig with touch designer so basically if we open the last touch designer release we can find here in the palette the cd bitwig bundle there are several things here several plugins several uh, components and in order to uh, understand what these components are doing we should actually remember remind what we were talking here about we have different levels of control over the bitwig data and all these operators correspond to these levels of control so first in order to connect bitwig to touch designer we can use the bitwig main and it's quite easy it's just you just have here the bitwig ip address you don't need to change in most of cases anything here out of this parameter and after you connected uh, after you loaded this bitwig main uh component it's already connected so if you see that it's connected you can work further then uh, we have bunch of other components here one component is a bitwig track oh no sorry let's start with a bitwig song song is a full project and here you can control the bitwig behavior so you can control the transport you can play stop you can switch recording you can change the tempo and it's all synchronized so you can control bitwig from touch designer and it returns a bunch of uh, 
channels corresponding to the current transport uh, playback values. So you can see what is actual tempo is returned, if it's playing, if it's recording, if loop is enabled, the loop start position, loop duration, frag, uh, playback fraction, transport position, etc etc so what is current the current bar is playing what is position inside of bar oh. okay then in order to get more detailed you have other operators and first where we really need to dive in is the bitwig track Bitwig track will control one of Bitwig tracks. And here you can have different ways to control. You can just use one Bitwig track uh, component to control any of tracks. For that you have next and previous tracks buttons where you can scroll between Bitwig tracks. Here you will see the name of the track and same way like you can use bitwig song to control the bitwig parameters you can also control track parameters so you can make mute unmute active unactive you can control volume so for example i can deal with phase four so i can select previous track mute it turn back to the phase 4, unmute it, then I can go to Bitwig song, click play, and here you can see I can control the volume of the track, panorama, I can even control color, and I can control the FX sense. Okay, so let me stop the playback. Then inside of track, like we were speaking before, we have the clips and clip slots. So let's create both of them. Here we have again this track navigation part. We can go to the phase 4 pin track. Then we can see the slots. So the slot 0 is not empty. That's the basic sequence we have. We can rename it here. And name it first and turn back to touch designer and we will see that I wrote the name of the track wrong but doesn't matter we can see that name here so we can launch this track launch, launch this clip slot we can also record here stop Then we have a clip, between clip component. We should navigate to our track again. Then same way we can navigate between clips and pin clip. And here we have some additional controls about this clip. Launch quantization, launch mode, color, play start, play stop, if loop is enabled. And also these components will return some informational channels about what happens with this clip. Same here. Mm. 
then uh, logically out of clips we have also nodes inside of clips it's even deeper level of control so we can create a bitwig node and that is a maybe most important operator for working with audio visual synchronization because here we can receive the actually played the notes actually played back so we can navigate to our track pin it and i will go to the clip and launch it and here we can see that note 48 and note 43 uh, 53 is playing what is problematic now and still not realize it in td bitwig td bitwig don't understand these generative possibilities of bitwig of playing the repeated notes so it, it will not return the data about that but we can have some workarounds using the node <coughs> node fix i think and i was doing i was trying to build in here the node length uh, node fix which can control the node length So I will make it shorter than one of 16. Or I can even control it in milliseconds. So let's try to go now and see what is coming to Touch Designer. Uh, it's still very buggy. So it not, not always works. So in that case, I would say it's better either to use the separated nodes to send it to Touch Designer, and uh, or we can basically create another MIDI track, an instrument track. Uh, let's take MIDI from phase four note length and we can record so now i have that sequence recorded and i can okay i recorded too short but basically i just wanted to show you how we can work around so i will make the shorter sequence and important that midi nodes to be properly sent to touch designer need to be shorter so i have to have the gaps between the midi nodes so now i can try to drop this clip back to phase four and we can see that now we responding the proper nodes and what is cool, even in comparison to CD Ableton, that it's not only can not only returns the note numbers, but you can translate index to pitch. So now you can see what particular note is playing by name. And the value of channel returned is actually the velocity. Okay, let's go forward. We have also some additional things called Bitwig Remote Device, Bitwig Remote Track, Bitwig Remote Project. That is a way to interact with tracks, with devices and with the project itself. And for that, I need to turn back to Bitwig to explain something more. Uh, in Bitwig, 
we have not only modulators we have also very flexible way how we can control the complex devices by making the remote controls so that is these knobs which are mapped to some particular knobs from the synthesizer or other built-in effects and uh, basically these remote controls can be on the device level on the track level and on the project level that's super cool because using that you can control the all parameters on one view for example if you can see here i opened the uh, show track remotes so if i have some track remotes like here uh, i can control everything inside of this track directly from that view and if i bring uh, track remotes to all tracks i can have kind of user interface for all tracks so during the live performance i don't need to switch between tracks to see the values i can control everything from here that's a super super handy that uh, is uh, right for the remotes and for modulators so we can have also the modulators on the device level which can modulate any parameter of device and all built-in nested devices we can have the track level modulators which can modulate all devices on one track and we can have the project level mod uh, modulators which can modulate any device in your project uh, it's uh, not only right for the uh, flexibility of control it also can improve your computer performance for example if you want to use everywhere one uh, side chain from the kick drum for example you don't need to create it in every device and analyze the sound again and again and again you can build one side chain on the project level so i think i can show my other project which is more Okay, now I should find where is my kick is playing. Yeah, that can be inside of drum machine. So I can find it using drum machine and find the device inside. Ye kick. Post. And you can see that I have here one, one uh, audio side chain. And using that side chain, I can modulate now any parameter on any track. So I can use it on, for example, this cutoff filter. I can go somewhere to the other synthesizer and control something more like volume of this track
so uh, one question I see in chat if the track remotes working or with selected track no uh, it can be you can have the track remotes for every track or, uh, or you mean the track remotes in touch designer so you can have the track remotes for every track and you can design your own track remotes so you can create the new page you, you also can see the open track remotes control editor and here you can create the additional control page and in order to map the remotes you just go here click on this uh, wi-fi button and you can select any controls you want to be able to control from track remotes and you have it and then if you want to control device remotes track remotes or project remotes in touch designer you have correspondent devices so you have for example big bitwig remote project uh, bitwig remote track then you can scroll to the track you want to control for example in that case i was working with polymer so i can go to unpin track then pin polymer and you see that here i can select the remote control page so now it's selected the perform page i just created and you can see the cutoff high pass and decay parameter i just mapped and if i bring the bitwig back you can see that i can okay this is still not properly uh, no, not always properly working for my experience I have no idea why i think that uh, td bitwig is still still a bit uh, raw not really ready and as soon as i know from the developers there are some problems and bitwig api so they're working on it still okay uh, answering to the question if we can have only one remote page controlled from touch designer no because we can create so much of these bitwig remote tracks devices we want and just pin different tracks here so i can go to the phase four now and yeah okay that doesn't have any project uh, remotes so if i if i do them i can create new page and map some parameters and now i can try to control it from touch designer so you can see that i have these parameters i just mapped and and they don't work in any way <coughs> sorry for that that i cannot change so basically in case you want to use it in your performance and td bitwig devices uh, td bitwig devices not really working you can uh, make work around using midi mapping for these remote controls okay maybe now is a good time to make something interesting from scratch and let me save this project as well and i will start a new touch designer project and i will save this bitwig project and i will create a new project save it so what i wanted to make i find very inspiring idea 
to use some loops which have sound inside so we have several i i, I gathered several glitch loops which have some sound inside and I want to play back them in sync to make a sound in Bitwig from these loops and to make a visual syntax designer from the same loops. So that is my idea for some practical example for today. And I will start by dropping all these uh, loops in touch designer i will create a base operator i will also save the project to make relative paths from the start and inside of base i will create the folder dot And in folder that I will choose to output only files and to output only movie extensions. So I have now the table of video loops and then I want to bring these loops also inside of Bitwig using drum machine so i will go to the instrument one drop here the drum machine and let's start from c1 bringing the videos what is also very cool that you can drop mp4 the videos from Explorer directly into Bitwig as the audio samples and I just want to care about the order so I will take first the leaders mp4 then I will bring here the noise blue lines 0.1 noise green 0 0.1 okay uh, that was not proper noise green noise green lines okay so we can noise green then we have noise green electric then we have noise white Then we have noise white 2 and ring noise. Okay, now I have the corresponding amount of samples and I can start to make some sequence. So let's make some 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 sequence. And playback. So we can adjust a bit the 
sound. Okay, that is a very basic setup. We can work on sound a bit later. So AV and I will save it also to our working folder. And let's make uh, the setup in touch designer. So what I want to make, I want to make a replicator to load all the samples this video samples and for that i will make a base operator and that will be a prototype for replicating so i will create the movie file in to load the movie then i want to refer this movie to the folder one so i will create some user interface control so i will customize i will drop here the dot parameter and that will be called folder then i will create the volume and that will, will be float then i will make the play button which should have pulse type then I will make offset to randomize the place where we play back the samples that will be the float parameter and for now that's all so now I will drop this folder here and let's make the component. So we 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 going to load the uh, load parameter dot and then we going to make the select dot. So now I will select the that which is corresponds to the folder parameter op parameter one oh, just p just p then we need to load the row called folder and column called value then from here we load by index and we need to use the parent base digit so we use for that parent digits and copy to the end row index and we should include the first row which contains a path parameter. So now we going to load here the, that will be the M. Let's load op M square parenthesis, first row and column called path. So we loaded the movie. Then in order to control the volume, we're going to use the level. And output the result to out. Then we should use the folder, uh, the parameter chop to control the let's select the volume 
and rename it to the level one colon opacity and then we select another parameter called uh, play that that should ah, okay i think i will replace the play by the integer so i will make the customized component play and i will change the style to integer and here i going to change the name to the movie file in one and parameter is called play then also we need to trigger the Q. For that, we're going to create a trigger on the start. Remove attack, sustain, decay, and release. And if I open the parent parameter, if you start the start the play, we have a short trigger on the start so that we should rename to the movie file in q pulse now we have control of playback and we can also use the offset to control the Q point so that we will change here offset and we set it to the Q U point and let's merge all these guys together that 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 and that and here we can make the expert using the channel name is path parameter and click on expert so now we're controlling all parameters of the playback. I should change the Q pulse. Yeah, now it should be mapped to the Q button, play, Q point, and the opacity. So let's save the project and now we should generate the replicator so let's create a replicator the table will be the template dot table the base one will be the master operator before i drop it to the master operator i do the uh, base to be clone master for itself so then if i change something in the base it will be automatically uh, inherited by the all replicated items and now i drop it to the master operator and we have nine movies which we can use for our visuals and now is a question how we will design the visuals uh, for that we can use several uh, ways to work we can just bring the layout on the end we can mix them somehow i will prefer to use instances and for that reason i need to create the 2d texture array which i can create by gsl multi-top 
the idea of using 2D texture array is that I can easily use the smoothies as a textures on the planes and that planes I will create as a geometry. So I will select all these guys, bring them to the GLSL multi-top and in order to generate a 2D texture array we can we don't need too much of GLSL causing background it's very easy we can change the output output type to 2D texture array we change depth from input to custom and set uh, nine units then we change input mapping from all inputs to every slice to n inputs per slice and then we go to template code and uncomment these two lines and comment the this line and now we have a 2d texture array which is synced to all different movies and then we output that as a result of our base operation so now i will save the project maybe i will set first the all volumes to one and play to one so we can see what happens inside and then we can use this texture to generate the uh, visualization now i going to create a grid yeah i need to make one more thing inside i need to make the fit and i will fit all these movies to the size of thousand by thousand points and fit outside so then we can uh, have a square grids and now i will create the grid with three by three and i need some geometry attribute which can uh, be used as a texture w coordinate for select different 2d textures from the 2d texture array for that reason i will create the sort i want to randomize the order of the points and using the seed parameter i can uh, change the order of the textures on the grid and then i can uh, generate the attribute by the point sop and in custom i will make the pid which can be interpreted as a point id and use the integer and write here the small expression me dot input point dot index in order to che check what i've done i can use sop to that and then i can see that pid have a different values that's cool that will be used as a reference grid for the instancing now i can create a geometry inside of geometry i will make the grid two by two then i will make the transform or i just set the size 0 0.5 and enable display render flag here and here i going on the geometry component parameters i go to instancing page enable instancing i will drop the null on the end of the that network and drop this null to the default instance op then i can use the p1 p p0 p1 p2 for the coordinates of the grid 
and I need to scale the size of the grid that we have some small gaps between the instanced grids. Now I will need the go to the instance to page and set up the double instance w coordinate and set it to the PID. And now I can use the output texture on the material. So I will create the constant material and drop that as a texture and drop this material to the geometry and you can see that all these textures are separated around different instances. Now I can create a camera Oop. change the type of camera to the orthographic and create the render top for rendering now I will set up it to full HD resolution save the project and I can zoom my camera by changing the ortho width parameter something like that okay I don't see any questions for now then it's maybe a good moment to make some small announcement so basically I want to tell you that we will run a six-week course about audiovisual production with Bitwig and Touch Designer and we do today the announcement about this course the program is not completely ready it's like the draft but uh, basically we want to make the parallel teaching of both touch designer and bitweek and uh, do on the end of the course for last two weeks quite pra practical part about to making interactive audiovisual installation and uh, about the audiovisual performance setup so if you want to jump in is a good time the page is available uh, and i will put the address url to the chat a bit later it's howtotouch.com slash tdbitwig and let's continue to the our lesson okay now is a good moment to make the connection between the touch designer and bitwig so what we will need we will need to get the midi nodes i done the connection in order between how the textures were loading with the nodes especially to really synchronize and now we have to bring some uh, TD Bitwig devices here so we can drop here the Bitwig, tra uh, Bitwig main to make the connection then we go to drop the Bitwig node and it's already pinned to the drum machine and now we can play back so now we can see that we have the node starting from 36 and going until 42 uh, in order to bring our nodes in proper order I would prefer to generate first the channels and then to control them by replace chop so for that I will create a constant and I will generate the nodes 
node channels by the pattern matching node slash square parentheses 36 until 42 so now i have seven channels that is not so good because we need to have a nine channels so let me check what is the problem here aha uh -huh, okay until 44 so now we have the nine channels in proper order what is important and then i will take the output from the bitwig nodes and use the replace chop to replace the channel values by names so now i will be sure even if some node was not played yet that the order of of channels will be proper then i will take the rename and rename them to the let's call this from base one to the move leap and now i can rename the channels to the move move leap slash item and then we have items going from one until nine that will be the path to the operators and then we use the nodes as a volume control yeah and we have a play so we can do two things we rename it again rename then we add here the asterisk colon play that will be controlling the video playback and for controlling the transparency which was volume channel we can use the okay let's play back and test okay we can actually use the velocity so that's mean for the playback we just need to insert here the logic operator because we need to set the playback from zero to one and to velocity we will add some small leg to blend the transparency a bit smoother so we just use the 0.2 on the leg out then we use a mat operator to map the velocity from 100 to 0 to 1 and then we rename it to the volume i think with big v so we add asterisk colon volume what else for now is all first we can achieve that way the basic playback control so for that we're going to merge these channels and we output export method channel name is path parameter and we click on export and because we use this template names we 
can control all our replicated items with only one export button. That is very, very powerful possibility of Touch Designer. And now we can test. Okay, now I need, I want to make a bit more, something more interesting than just uh, that. What I want to change here, I want to, uh, first I want to mix the position of textures on the grid every second bar, let's say, using random generator. So that's I can do already here. I go to the project remotes and I will set up the output of data from the project remotes to touch designer. For that I need first to create a modulator which will be called just the random and I will set to generate random values every second bar and I will create a new page then it's a tricky question how I can get this data to the remote control that way I found is actually to create another modulator which is the macro macro is a knob then i can modulate that knob by the random value and then i can map this knob to remote and now if i play back you will see by this blue line around the knob the random values outputted by the random modulator. So now I can go back to Touch Designer and I can capture that by the Bitwig remote project. And here you can see that Bitwig remote project returns Okay, let's set up it first properly. We need to check the remote control page called perform. And you can see that we have parameter 0 slash value and parameter 0 slash modulated value. So we need to take this modulated value to get the actual modulated data from Bitwig to Touch Designer. So I will use a select chop here and I will choose this part par zero modulated value then I will multiply it by 10 and then I need to drop it to the seed parameter here so that time I just can use null and just make a show preference now on every second bar the order of the grid will change next thing i want to make i want to control the uh, playback start so for all of my, or at least for several of my uh, samples, if I go inside of uh, sampler, you can see here we have a play start parameter. So we can modulate this play start parameter. There are two choices on that point. Uh, should do we want to modulate it from 
touch designer and send it here to Bitwig or do we want to modulate it in Bitwig and send the modulated start back to touch designer. I tried in my example what I want to upload for you using the first way sending the data from touch designer to Bitwig but what I found it's buggy. So now I will try to do the opposite thing and you can see that I have perform page for the sampler and it already has a start position. So what I want to make, I want to make now the track remote. I will do the perform page and map that to the start position here. Then I go to the second one. I will start. I will call, rename it to start one. Then I do the same for perform for the second sample. Start two. Then I do the next sample. Select the perform page here, map it to the start position. Start four or three. And I go to the, that one and repeat. Okay, now I can capture these uh, times in touch designer, but first I think I need to care about the modulation. And logically it would be cool somehow to check the length of the tracks. I think for that we don't have so much time already, but I will try to do it for several of tracks. And let's start with the first one which has a five parts. So we should go with step of 20%. Let me think how we can achieve that right now. We can do it by using step steps and you can see here in lower part of Bitwig interface we can actually see the precise values. It's not that easy. Maybe I will find uh, and update you with other approach how it can be done easily. But let's make a five step sequencer and change the synchronization to bar and modulate the start one parameter by that. Then we can try something else for the second one. What is the par sequence eight? Okay, we have that way. So the second sequence has One, two, three, four, five. Also, so 
so we can set it to the bar or even we can generate a random value to every node theoretically but let's let's stay with bars and we can set it to okay no i think this is not so cool let's let's just make with the random generator i think we don't have so much time right now and let's set it to bar and generate it on every bar the random values and modulate a second then we can copy that modulator paste here paste here paste here so we have one two three four five paste paste and paste and now we can modulate And last one. And now we can use the track remotes to capture these values back to Touch Designer. So I will drop the Bitwig remotes track. And the a remote page called perform so basically we can use these modulated values we select all channels called mod well And then we need to rename them to the offset parameter we made in our items. So we just use the another name. Here and add here the colon and offset. And then we will just bring it to the merge. And we have uh, movies which are offset at the same value like in Bitwig. So we can now add a bit of something interesting on sound. Uh, you can see the nice possibility to select the track separately, subtrack of drum machine. So I will close now the visualization of track and project remotes. I will also modulate the start parameter of the leaders. For that I can use something like segments and map it to the sixteen bars. Then I can draw some something interesting here. and use that for modulating the play start and 
then I need to make this uh, remove the panorama and the sound here and I use tool for that and I will change the diff to zero then I will add some compressor here Then I will add some step to change the pitch. Then I will add some filter. on the filter something like six bars we also might need some effects I will put here the convolution reverb Just the other sound channels also. Here now,
okay i think it's all for today more or less what i planned to tell you about last information about our planet course you can find the page here and uh, yeah please ask questions and uh, i think the my friends from tdsv wanted also to tell something on the end of the course of the lesson yeah thank you sir uh, so yeah everyone if you have any question please uh, you can just comment on the chat instance there's a question yeah one second oops uh logically yeah the question was uh does touch designer have touch compatible controls you can uh, create for controlling bitwig so basically yes because in touch designer we can deal with a touch screen so we can create any kind of touchable user interface and then we can try to send these channels back to the track uh, project or device remotes using the td bitwig devices so basically yeah you can also use any kind of interactive uh, sensors for sending the control channels to bitwig so basically also bitwig itself uh, works quite well with uh, touch uh, touch screens because you can switch it to the touch screen uh, mode and you can use all these uh, i think if you use all all of these knobs you can easily control your performance with touch screen uh can a timeline send oc output control to td logically yes also if you just uh, send uh uh, you, you can uh, automate yeah you can make automation so if i will drop the clip here and i can enable the playback in the ranger then i can automate and i can have a track controls here and automate them so for example if i would add a new page and make a new slider here map this slider Oops. slider then I can automate it easily here and also like automation in Bitwig is very cool so you can make the smooth blending between k points and then you can send it all the track remotes again uh can bitwig receive ltc time code start so basically i don't try it yet to control bitwig per uh, time code but because we have in uh, we have the song control here and song control have the play and stop buttons you can control this from touch designer you using ltc time code easily that is a very good question last one can you send audio rate signals over to touch designer and back uh basically 
you can use uh, the virtual sound card like for example if i would play some sound in audio file in and then i will use the audio device out and then i use the question if i have installed here the some virtual sound card driver okay so you can use a, uh, I, I don't have it on this this machine but basically you can send it using the any kind of virtual sound card to bitwig using jack using uh, dante Okay, it looks like uh, all questions are answered. So maybe I... Yeah, have... it's uh, time to wrap up. Yes. Yeah, thank you so much, Stan. Um, yeah, so you said uh, you're going to upload your sample file later. Yeah, I think I will upload this last project I done. And uh, first uh, uh, example, I was showing different Bitwig stuff. Okay, uh, yeah, this is our first collaboration with Stan. Uh, it was pretty fun, fun workshop for me, and I hope everyone can enjoy that. So, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Please tell goodbye, everyone, and uh, until next time. Bye bye. Bye bye.